the Minnesota Wild and the Montreal Canadiens at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul are Northland Ford starting goaltenders. Well, Carey Price has uh, seen the lion's share of the work, and he will, although they do have a couple of solid goaltenders. Together, they've combined for about a 1.77 goals against this season. They're kicking them out pretty well. Josh Harding will get back in the net. Maybe it's a sign that the Wild are going to start putting Harding in there on a more frequent basis, but Mike Yo said this morning it's a good opportunity to get Harding back in there now that he's healthy again and get him playing as he's played very well this season. Harding leads the NHL in goals against and save percentage coming into play tonight. And when the puck is down, we are underway. Nico Toivu at center. And Brodziak flips it into the Montreal zone. P.K. Subban back to pick it up. Knocked down by Niederreiter. Toivu trying to dig it loose for Minnesota. First look at these new line combinations for the Wild. Toivu, Brodziak, and Niederreiter. The first three to hit the ice tonight. One of the great things about having the wealth spread out, if you will, Mike Yo said, is it's going to be very difficult for the opposition regardless of whether you're at home or on the road, to really focus on any one line. Uh, who are they going to throw their shutdown line out against? With the Wild spreading it out like that, it's going to be very difficult on them. Wild make a change. Now it's the Coil, Heatley, Parisi line up front. Keith Ballard back to pick it up for Minnesota. Banks it out to neutral ice. Georges has it there. Parisi pokes it loose, chases it down in the corner. Coil throws a heavy hit behind the net, knocking Georges to the ice. Bourneval try to tip it ahead and it finally comes out to neutral. Clayton Stoner back to pick it up in Minnesota. Always a good and sign to side. Always a good sign to see a young guy getting in there after coming back in the lineup, missing a lot of games to get in there and get physical right away. Shows a lot of confidence in his game. And that's the kind of game he's got to play. Right there. It's just a shoulder on shoulder hit. And that's where that line's gonna have to win a lot of the battles, is behind that goal line. Mikhail Granlund back to pick it up for Minnesota. DeHarnay knocked him off the puck. Granlund goes down, and LeBlanc has it for Montreal. Tried to play it behind the Minnesota goal, but that's poked away by Scandella. Scandella's pass at center, hit Commonville in the skate, and the Canadians send it back in. Harding out to play it for Minnesota. Granlund tips for Commonville, but that's off the mark, and LeBlanc plays it back down low. Saban down from the point. Drops it for LeBlanc. Tried to go back to the defenseman, but it's intercepted by Cook. And Spurgeon pokes it ahead. Canadians are on side at the line. DeHarnay drops it back. And the shot was blocked. Harding hugging the right post as they to the corner. No surprise to see Subban stepping up in the play there. They're going to have to be very conscious. Whoever's on the ice, when 76 is out there on that left side, uh, that puck's going to be dropped to him on a frequent basis because he likes to unload on those shots. White in the corner. Lost it to Mitchell. And a point-blank chance from Fontaine hit the side of the net. Stoner has it. Stoner's long shot blocked out front. Mitchell trying to keep the play alive. Mitchell and Fontaine, the wings with Zen and Kanopka in the middle on this fourth line for the Wild. Peros up the right wing for Montreal. Around to the far corner, too far for White. Ballard and Peros collide. Fontaine tried to slide it backward between his legs. That was off the mark, and Mitchell is able to tip it out to center for the Wild. Pretty good tempo here in the opening three minutes in St. Paul. A long shot held by Josh Harding. Well, Fontaine moved to that fourth line, and Bayou sent back to Iowa after he cleared waivers, but already showing some dividends there with a good, quick shot. If Fontaine and Heatley in practice kind of flip-flopped, and he did run into Murray, who's about 240, so he paid the price to get that shot. Yeah, but Fontaine and Heatley did flip-flop a few times in practice, so there is a chance that Fontaine will find himself on that top line at times. Yeah, but we'll see how that all plays out. Diaz back in his own zone. His pass cross ice was off the mark. Niederreiter has it in the corner. Out to Jonas Brodine. A long shot tipped wide by Brodziak. Niederreiter tries to jump around a check. But the Canadian's able to clear. 
Gallagher into the Minnesota zone. His shot blocked. Comes across the near side where the Wild have it. Niederreiter pokes it down into the Montreal zone. Subban back to play it. Eller tips it back for P.K. Subban. Last year, the highest scoring defenseman in the NHL. Stops inside the Minnesota line. Plays to the corner. Centering pass all the way across to Markov. And a long shot is held by Josh Harding. Well, with the emergence of Mikhail Granlund comes the flexibility to move centers around. And uh, you maybe wouldn't have thought that with Granlund coming forward like that, the Wild would have so many centermen that could move into so many different spots. And because he's done such a great job this year moving into the center position, only after Charlie Coyle got hurt, it gives the Wild the option to put Coyle up center, Koivu at center, Granlin at center, and then Brodziak pushed off to the wing. So it's an interesting combination. The Wild aren't stuck in any of the spots, but certainly have a lot of options. And when you have options up the middle, you're that much better of a hockey team. Eatley battling along the wall. Spurgeon steps up and leads the rush for Minnesota. To Parisi, back to Spurgeon on his backhand. And it was deflected away to the corner. Eatley cannot hold the zone for Minnesota. It comes back into the wild zone. And this is Jared Spurgeon with it. Long pass at center, tipped in by Heatley. Parisi hustling after it in the corner. But Bouillard's the first man there for Montreal. Heatley to Granlin. Granlin tried to center, but it's intercepted by LeBlanc. And it's also blocked. That's one thing that the Canadiens are very good at is blocking shots. Expect to see a lot of them in this game. Suter with it for Minnesota to Pominville. Feeds Cook into the Montreal zone. Back to Pominville. It was just out of his reach. Cook joining this pair of Granlund and Pominville for Minnesota. Those two have been the highest scoring wild forwards in recent games. And with all the shuffling, Mike Gill wanted to make sure he kept Pominville and Granlund intact. But they have a new left winger in Matt Cook. Gianta plays it into the Minnesota zone. Brodine behind his goal. First crosses with Ryan Suter. Five and a half minutes in to a scoreless first period. You can see that Brodine's wearing that full bubble, trying to protect that fractured cheekbone. But the swelling did go down enough so that he could step into the lineup. Tori Mitchell. Up on top, Ballard score! It changed direction on the way, and it's one nothing Minnesota. Gary <laughs> Price didn't even move. This is just a wrist shot. I was just trying to go to Kanopko or Fontaine in the middle for a deflection. He did get a deflection, but maybe off of someone else, a defender for the Canadiens. Right back into the lineup after being out for some time, and it actually may have gone off a wild player. That did go off a skate, it appeared. We'll see who it's given credit to, but I think that was Fontaine. It deflected first off of a Canadian defender, and then Fontaine inadvertently deflects it into the net. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Canadians are very good at blocking shots, but they weren't able to block this one. It was actually deflected. It's always a bonus when your fourth line gets in on the scoring for you. Ballard and Mitchell assist on the goal by Fontaine, his fourth. He came into tonight's game, tied for fifth among all rookies with three goals scored. Well, he's been productive no matter where he's been. He's had time on, on all of the lines now, including this fourth line in this game, and he's putting numbers up and being effective no matter where he is. That's how you stay in the lineup. Brodeen battling to keep this play out of the Minnesota zone, but can't do it. And the Canadians answer on a tip by Gallagher. Doesn't take them long, and it's now 1-1. Brodeen was beaten at the blue line, and it turned into a two-on-one for Montreal. And it's just saucered up waist high, and he just takes the puck into the net off his body. Brodeen just got tangled up a little bit. Now Galchenyuk just threw it across the front of the net. Gallagher just walked right into it. Takes it off of his body. That is allowed. They are going to look at this, but he didn't kick it in. He just put the brakes on. 
and was putting the brakes on as it went off his skate. What they'll look at is whether that had a kicking motion, and there wasn't a kicking motion there. He was just throwing the binders on and took the puck in the net with him. They are looking at it, but I think you're going to find that this one is going to be just a great saucer pass and a guy who's crashing the net getting the benefit of the doubt. And it is called a goal, and so it should be. And tie game very quickly here. A lot of speed up front to the Canadians, and while they're going to have to be very aware of the blue line that they have guys that can really move the puck up the ice. So the Canadians answer the Minnesota goal just 25 seconds after Fontaine has given the Wild the early lead. Fontaine back up on that top line now alongside Coyle and Parisi. So shuffling going on already here with the Wild. Parisi to Coyle. Fights his way into the Montreal zone. Coyle down low to Parisi behind the net. To Suter at the point. His long shot goes wide. Brodine down to hold the zone for Minnesota. But Morneval intercepts for Montreal. He couldn't get it out. He'll get a second try. Fontaine pokes it away. And finally the Canadians have it at center. Whipped down into the Minnesota zone. Ryan Suter goes back to pick it up. Brodine. Pass off the mark at center and it'll be icing against the Wild and a face off back in the Minnesota zone. Our Toyota key stat shows you just how out of character it is to see a goal for each side already. These teams have been making their living by keeping the puck out of their net. And we didn't expect to see much tonight with Montreal number two in the league, Minnesota number five in terms of fewest goals allowed. For the Wild, a lot of that's because of the fact they don't allow a ton of shots, but the Canadiens aren't in that boat. They actually are 22nd in the league in shots allowed, so they, you know, they're a team that uh, is holding them out <laughs> the old-fashioned way. Ryan Suter for Minnesota. Finds Matt Cook at neutral ice. Races into the Montreal zone. Across to Palmonville. And the pass handcuffed him just a bit. Return pass. Palmonville with a shot. And it trickles just wide. And then Carey Price pops cover. Justin Fontaine gave Minnesota a 1-0 lead. Brendan Gallagher answers. It's one all. High flying action early here as the Wild and the Habs are tied at one. A lot of great players returning to the lineup for Mikey on the Minnesota Wild. More than just Charlie Coyle and Josh Harding. A couple blue liners. Keith Ballard had an assist on that first goal. Of course, Jonas Brodine had a conversation with him this morning about the comfort level playing with that iTech bubble. He said it's been a process. He's taken some contact. He looks completely different, guys, off the ice. But he's had some surgeries. He's had some work done on those teeth. And it's going to be, I think, a little bit of time before he feels totally set in that helmet. But, boy, talking to Mike. Mike, yo, the look on his face of relief when he said that Brodine was playing. He means so much to this team. And, guys, plays far beyond his years, no doubt. I asked Brodine uh, whether he would like the fact that he was wearing a cage initially. He wore a cage back in uh, when he played international hockey in Sweden. He says he likes the bubble a little bit more vision, even if it is a little bit hotter because you don't have the wide-open screen you down as you skate. Price forced to cover this, so icing waved off. And a faceoff coming in the Montreal zone. They didn't know whether Brodine was coming back even as early as yesterday, or at least he wasn't indicating so. Kind of insinuated that he wouldn't be playing. But sometimes uh, uh, pr pressure by the player himself, saying that I'm okay, I feel good. We'll give the coach more options. And this morning, he became a very clear option. Koivu slides it ahead behind Niederreiter. Eller scoops it up for Montreal and fires it out of play into the Minnesota bench. Game had really good pace in the first few minutes, although not a ton of shots, a total of five. Three for Montreal through the first eight minutes. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a test for the Wild. Uh, even though they switched their lines up all season long, this is probably the most uh, dramatic change that they've had spreading a lot of the wealth throughout their lines and uh, just trying to find new chemistry with new combinations, but also new guys back in the lineup. 
Fontaine tips it into the Montreal zone. Again, Fontaine getting a chance to play with Coyle and Parisi. P.K. Subban for Montreal. Across to Markov. LeBlanc into the Minnesota zone. Harney able to center there to LeBlanc. His shot picked up by Harding. Markov with it. Across to Subban. LeBlanc scoops it up for the Canadians with traffic out front through and toward the net. Charlie Coyle now scoops it up for Minnesota. In behind for Ballard and then Stoner hanks it off to center ice. Bouncing puck tipped in by Fontaine. Subban back there picks it up for Montreal. DeHarnay into the Minnesota zone. His shot blocked by Suter and we're going to get a penalty against Montreal. And I think Bork's going to get a slashing call right here. Bork whacked the stick right out of the hands of Suter as he tried to exit the zone. Parisi back to Suter. Delayed penalty coming against Montreal. Pass is tipped and as the Canadians gain control we get the whistle and the first power play of the night will go to Minnesota. Well good D in the wild zone. DeHarnay gets a shot but it's blocked. Good physical play and then the stick is slashed out of Fontaine's hand by Bork who just wasn't quick enough to get on that. And good to see Fontaine already figuring in uh, not only with the goal but drawing penalties because of his hustle. Now one of the things to watch Mike is how the Wild will have to shuffle their power play because they have players coming from so many different lines. Well, and even more importantly what do they do when the power play is over. Then you have to try and put those lines back together and if the guys are out there for quite some time it's going to be interesting to see how Mike Yo uh, does the the line juggling. But it's a good problem to have. It's Coyle, Parisi, and Koivu up front for Minnesota with Pominville and Suter at the points. Koivu in the corner. Out to Suter. Back to Miko Koivu. Koivu bobbled it for a moment, regains control. Down low to Coyle. Plays to Suter. Suter fires. That was blocked out front. Pominville holds his own. Parisi with it for Minnesota. Top power play goal scorer for the Wild with four. Down low to Koivu. Centers. Koivu with a drive and a save by Price. Coyle again and this one's tipped. Great offensive zone time for Minnesota but then Pondonville's pass behind Suter forces the defenseman to come back after him. Uh, Coyle didn't uh, waste any time getting into a good position as a right-hander on that side. A couple of good one-timers. One of them looked like it may have gotten past Price and hit the post but uh, good to see him posting up and the guys feeding him early here. White comes away with the puck for Montreal. Across to Bournival into the Minnesota zone. A long shot played by Harding. Wants to keep it alive to put it right back on the stick of Bournival. Niederreiter has it for Minnesota. Three on two at center. Granlin, Niederreiter, and Danny Heatley. Heatley into the Montreal zone. Tried to slide it out front to Niederreiter. That hit escape. Granlin banks it off the boards. Out to Ballard. Back to Granlin. Still half a minute in the power play. Ballard with it. Long shot. Tipped out front. Niederreiter redirected just wide. And the Canadians able to clear. Gallagher sends it all the way down. Well, what I like about Ballard, and we keep mentioning the fact that there's a lot of blocked shots by the Canadians. Ballard has a way of getting the puck through. They're not going through very hard, but they're getting through screens, deflections, and that set up the Wilds' first goal. So hopefully he can keep feeding the puck through there. The Canadians in the last two games have actually blocked more shots then they've given up. Icing coming here against Montreal on a faceoff back in the Canadian zone. Ballard yells back at full strength. Ballard feeds this one through and it looked a lot like the one. Look at this. It's just a little wrist shot. Nothing too special, but you got a guy in front. You got a couple other guys going to the net. All you have to do is take a nice little wrist shot and just get it over some sticks so that it gets to that second layer. You get it past that first layer, you find yourself with some uh, good opportunities. Brodeen into the corner for Kyle Brodziak. Brodziak closely watched there by Diaz. Eller behind the goal for Montreal. George is tied up on the near side. Fontaine trying to help dig it loose for Minnesota. And this is the first indication of how Mike Yo had to juggle a line after the power play. He's got Fontaine, Cook, and Brodziak on the ice. Brodziak plays to the far side. 
George is hustling after it. Fontaine with a quick chance. He's been active tonight for Minnesota. Rodziak back to Fontaine. Fontaine tried to feed the point, but it's intercepted. And Eller rolls one ahead for Gallagher. Gallagher into the Minnesota zone. He's tied up by Fontaine. Suter has it for the Wild. What I like about Mike Yo is he allows players to play themselves into positions, and Fontaine has played himself into some key situations already in this hockey game just by being tenacious, just by going to the net and getting opportunities and helping defensively as well. The Wild hosts the Devils Sunday night at 7 o'clock. The first 5,000 fans in attendance received a Kyle Bronziak player card magnet courtesy of Fox Sports North. For more details, FoxSportsNorth.com and click on the upcoming events banner. Face off in the wild zone after an icing call against Minnesota. Koivu to draw for Minnesota. He wins the face off. Suter has it. Tipped ahead out of the reach of Parisi. And the Canadians are able to come right back in. This time Harding will hold. As Bordy Ball takes a jab heading towards the Minnesota goal, 1-1. Charlie Coyle looking pretty good here early on. You remember, he came out of training camp very hard, and then a game and a half in, he was out for the rest of the month, but he's putting himself in key situations. Good shot there, and another one right there. And the more he does that, when he has the power play, the more they're going to start cheating over and keying on him, and that's when they need to start finding that backdoor option with the defender coming down on the other side. But the more Charlie Coyle figures into a situation in the offensive zone, the more they're going to pay attention to him, and that leaves other guys free to do what they can do. Ballard behind the Minnesota goal. Puts on the brakes, comes back out the other side, and across to Clayton Stoner, finds Zenit Kanapka at neutral ice. Tips it into the Canadian zone. Booyah back there, took a hit. Mitchell has the puck for the wild. Mitchell pinned up against the boards by Subban. And now Booyah with it. His clearing attempt deflected out to neutral ice. And then Blunden picks it up and plays it all the way down. Stoner back for Minnesota. Takes a hit from Blunden. Ballard whips it across on the right wing. Commonville brings it in. Granlin breaking up the slot. Threw it to an open wing. Mitchell had gone off on a change. Granlin thought he had support on his left. And now we're going to get an offside call against Montreal. Remember, if tonight's game goes to a shootout of the Wild win, everyone who brings a printed box score to participating Minnesota Army stores will receive a free order of curly fries. Offer is good for tomorrow only if the Wild win in an Army shootout tonight. If they do, it would be uncharted territory for Montreal. They have not gone into overtime yet this season, let alone a shootout. Scandella brings it in offside. We'll get another neutral zone faceoff. Marco Scandella from that area. So he's he grew up watching the Montreal Canadiens. He's a French-speaking gentleman as well. Always uh, a popular guy in the locker room whenever a while visit Montreal. Or, of course, with the Montreal media when they come to town. Draw controlled by the Canadiens. Coyle takes a hit as he goes back in his own zone. And he sends DeHarnay into the end wall. Referees let both guys go. <laughs> Spurgeon across to Scandella, who carries to center. Scandella to Parisi up the wing, a shot right on. And Carey Price makes the save and hangs on. Wild one, Canadians one, late in the first. Wild one, Canadians one. We asked Mike Yo about a change in system this year for Minnesota that allowed them to be more explosive offensively. But much of it that we talked about was more of a mentality as well. Um, you know, opening things up to go east-west a little bit more, um, you know, to try to spread the ice a little bit more. Uh, these are things, I think, that have uh, allowed us to attack with a little bit more speed to the neutral zone. And Mike Gill, obviously when you have a type of player that's considered more of a plugger, well, you, you get the puck over the red line or you get it over the defensive blue line and you saucer one in there, go after it and fight for it. But when you have some skill players like the Wild do now, you can certainly use them to carry the puck and carry it in the zone. That way you're not giving it up. Canadians offside. 
And we'll get another neutral zone faceoff. Had a few of these over the last couple of moments. On the wild, and Mike Gill spoke of it this morning about being good in the faceoff circle. And, and given the fact that they have a lot of centermen, a lot of guys who can take the draw, that it's easier to start with the puck. We can talk about systems, you can talk about puck possession, talk about all those things. If you're not starting with the puck, that means you're going to get it. Or at least you have to. You win the draws, you find yourself in a better position. Coyle able to jam it up the right wing wall. Danny Heatley back on this line with Coyle and Parisi. Harding plays it, turns it over, and a centering pass is tipped by Coyle, just enough to disrupt. Dangerous play as Harding turned the puck over deep in his own end. Morning ball was uncovered out front. Coyle was able to get a stick on the centering pass. Well, the good thing is, is you want goaltenders like Harding to play the puck. It really helps out the D. But you do run the risk every once in a while of having an errant pass or play. And that's where you got to play cover. DeHarnay into the Minnesota zone. Out to the point. Murray shot well wide of the goal. Murray down the wall to hold the zone for the Canadians. Stoner poking away for Minnesota. David DeHarnay with it now for Montreal. Leaves it behind for LeBlanc. LeBlanc trying to work free from Stoner. To the point, Murray across to Bouillon. Booyah back for Murray. Murray with a long shot. It got through. Harding with a pad save. Long stretch in the offensive zone for Montreal. Booyah spins away from Cook. Carries down low. Drops for LeBlanc. That shot blocked. LeBlanc has it back. Works around Stoner. Out to the point. Markov across to Booyah. Booyah's shot. Intercepted on the way by Stoner. And the Wild finally come away with the puck. Heatley dumps it in from center and heads off on a change. Now, a long time to play in your own zone, and that can just wear you down. Our teams want to do that. Get pucks in behind defensemen and just keep going to work. Granlin finds the puck in the Minnesota zone. Finds Niederreiter through neutral ice. Tipped in by Spurgeon. Spurgeon goes down in the corner, courtesy of Savan. Brodziak to Koivu at the point. Koivu's long shot off the end glass. Niederreiter. Pinned up against the boards by Subban. And Markov plays ahead for Peros, who carries to center ice. Into the Minnesota zone. London knocked off the puck by Spurgeon. Brodziak. To Scandella, who carries up through neutral ice. Koivu at the Montreal line. Flips down low. Scandella goes up against the boards after it. Niederreiter to Ballard at the point. Ballard's long shot tipped off front. Never reached the net. And the Canadians clear. Brodine just off the bench. Plays it for Minnesota. To Keith Ballard. Ballard looking for Parisi out of his reach. Fontaine has to play it back in. Minnesota retouches. Long pass at center, DeHarnay trying to battle past Charlie Coyle at the Minnesota line. Parisi winds up with the puck. Back to Ballard, and now Parisi with it. Ballard, long pass. It was not tipped by Coyle, so it'll be icing against the Wild. And a faceoff in the Minnesota zone. Parents, November is the NHL's Come Play Hockey Month. Don't forget that if your son or daughter would like to give hockey a try, attend a Try Hockey for Free event tomorrow at one of 72 locations across the state. All participants will get a jersey, goodie bags, and their USA Hockey be waived for the season. Find out more at minnesotahockey.org. Parisi wins the draw for Minnesota. Ballard to Brodine. Jams it around to the far point. But the Canadians able to hold. Markov's shot was intercepted on the way. Coyle tried to get it to Parisi. It hit the linesman's skate or else Parisi would have had clear sailing into the Montreal zone. Parisi tips it ahead but then lost it. Canadians are back the other way. Bianca's shot wide of the target. Subban has it in the corner. 
He's run down from behind by Charlie Coyle. Subban back on his feet. He and Coyle still tangled up, and the puck winds up in the Minnesota bench. Now Subban will figure heavily in a lot of different plays. He likes to get involved in a lot of things. He is sort of a flamboyant player, if you will. A lot of energy and even very physical as well. Doesn't mind chirping. Menards game reset. Justin Fontaine scored for Minnesota. Luke Ballard back in the lineup assisted on that goal. Took the Canadians only 25 seconds to answer, and Brendan Gallagher tied it. That's where we stand, 1-1. Late in the first period. Minnesota tonight playing in game 14, as we mentioned at the top. It's the first time since opening night that they've had their opening night lineup intact. The lines are very different, but it's the same 20 players in uniform. Icing against Montreal and a face-off in the Canadian zone. Not a lot of glaring opportunities for either one of these teams. Montreal is starting to figure in as a, as a pretty good team in terms of protecting their goaltender. A lot of blocked shots. The Wild, of course, have possessed the puck so much this season that they haven't given up a lot of shots. So do very well in the goal in the shots against the puck. So to this point, not a lot of great opportunities. Suter with a shot. It got through to Price. Pominville on the backhand. Bouncing puck. Cook to the point for Suter. Suter fires. That's wide. Cook overskates the rebound, but Brodine's able to hold. Cook tried to tap it to Pominville, but it was tipped out of the zone by LeBlanc. Wild quickly back on the attack with Granlund up the wing. Granlund regains the puck. Out to the point for Brodine. Half a minute to go in the period. Granlund to Pominville. Back to Granlund. Pump from behind by Markov. Pominville tried to flip it over the head of Granlund. And instead, it's intercepted and cleared. It'll be icing once more against Montreal. And with 13 and a half seconds left in the period, another offensive zone faceoff for the Minnesota Wild. Our century link linked to what's next. Kevin Gord will chat with Keith Ballard, who's back in the lineup tonight for Minnesota. And we'll have much more on the November, which officially starts tonight. The craze. It has become one. We may have actually convinced Anthony LaPanta to join the, the fun. I'm in. <laughs> I like it. Face off in the Montreal zone. Canadians win the draw. Parisi quickly on the puck. Point to Coyle for a shot saved by Price. Third point blank chance by Coyle from that area. This one's five on five. The other two were power play. What a shot. A great look for the Wild in the closing seconds of the period. And the fact that he's getting involved, opening himself up. Look at him find himself in an area here and just a little pitch back. Good save by Price who locked it down. And Charlie Coyle looking very good so far after being out for quite some time. We kick off November tonight. We'll have more on that plus Kevin Gord with Keith Ballard coming up in our first intermission. One one after one. Justin Fontaine scored early for Minnesota. Brendan Gallagher tied it for Montreal. Just 25 seconds later, let's go down to Kevin Gord with Daryl Sador. Coach, the Canadians are aggressive on the forecheck, and they do it with speed. How can you counteract that? Well, we need to be aggressive going back. We need to be uh, on our toes, uh, not waiting for them. We need to get back uh, quick, make the plays. going to give you some space to come out of your D zone. Guys, up to you. There's a couple shifts there where the Canadians were able to have the Wild in their own zone. And Wild need to use their strength. They have a lot of speed. I think Gil's talked about it before, getting up through the middle of the ice. Having their defensemen jump into the play and help out. They're still trying to figure each other out a little bit here. These, these lines are new. First time that we've seen the Parisi and Boivu split up. There's a lot of new combinations out there. Canadians had the upper hand in the faceoff circle in the first period by one. 
winning 12 of 23 draws. We're underway in the second. Niederreiter tried to get it to Koivu. Ryan Suter has to go back to recover for Minnesota. Leaves it for Brodeen behind his net. Jonas Brodeen ahead to Koivu. Sidesteps a check. Reaches center ice. Plays it into the Montreal zone. But the Canadians quickly able to clear. Markov got to the loose puck. Niederreiter plays it back to Ryan Suter. Pass caught Niederreiter in the skate. It results in a chance for Montreal. And Harding hangs on. We'll get a faceoff in the Minnesota zone as he easily holds the shot by Brian Gianta. Well, Jason Bombenville with a very good start this season. Mike Gill said it took a couple games for him to kind of really get going as a, a kind of shooter goal scorer, but he certainly has found the feel now, and he's starting to put pucks in the net, and he's doing it with confidence. It's one thing to get opportunities, but to shoot like you know you're going to score, that's starting to very, be very evident with Bombenville's game, and he'd love to do it against the Habs right now. Diaz with a shot. That's blocked on the way by Granlund. Granlund races back to center. Finds Pominville on the wing, and his shot disrupted just enough by Galchenyuk. Couldn't lay that puck down quick enough uh, because it was wobbling on him. He scored from there last game on a shot over Crawford's shoulder against Chicago. Granlund with it again for Minnesota. Avoids Eller's check and dumps it back to Scandella. Now Pominville reaches center ice. Comes all the way across to the near side looking for Granlin. Granlin wheels and fires toward the goal. Cook was breaking for the net. Price able to steer it just wide. Belchenia drops it back to Eller. Eller with a shot. That was blocked. Gallagher setting up out front for Montreal. Parisi racing after a puck in the Montreal zone. Subban got there first to Markov. His pass deflected by Gallagher. And now Subban working his way around Charlie Coyle into the Minnesota end. He takes a bump from Parisi. And Parisi now has the puck back to Danny Heatley at center. Heatley dumps it into the Montreal zone. Subban back to pick it up for the Canadians. Rene Bork up the left wing. His centering pass deflected by Ballard. Brodeen in to pick it up for the Wild. Parisi to Heatley. Got it caught in his skates. Still manages to fight his way into the Montreal zone, but then lost the puck, and Jonas Brodeen starts back at center. To Tory Mitchell, works his way around one man, a long one on goal, easily steered to the corner by Price. Murray, across to Booyah, back to Murray in his own zone. Icing waved off as Bork was able to tip it at center. Suter rides his man off the puck in the corner. And the loose puck is controlled by Minnesota. Jonas Brodeen reaches neutral ice, tips it into the Montreal zone. London able to force it back out to center. A lot of play in the neutral zone here in the opening three minutes of the second period. Mitchell to Fontaine and the Wild are two on two at the Canadian line. Fontaine waits for Mitchell to circle around him then fires it off of Price. Scandella to Spurgeon into the circle. His shot blocked. George has paid a price for that one. Fontaine plays to the corner. Spurgeon back to Fontaine. His shot didn't get much on it. He was tied up. Mitchell fires. That's blocked. And London clears to the wall. Releases have to be very quick because of the block shots by the Canadiens. You're going to keep seeing this. If you don't get rid of that puck in a hurry, someone's going to line up between you and the goaltender. Koivu tips it into the zone. Brodziak to Scandella. Scandella fires. Saved by Price. Rebound swept away just before Koivu could get there. Case in point. Good quick release by Scandella. Gets it through. Creates havoc in front of that net. Jared Spurgeon for Minnesota. Brodziak picks up a loose puck. Brodziak fires and a save by Price. Ballard back in his own zone. Just missed Brodziak and that'll be icing against Minnesota and a face off back in the wild zone. What a great chance for Kyle Brodziak just moments ago. But not before the Wild got blocked a few times. This Spurgeon, one off the inside of the knee by Georges, and uh, they stay with it, though. 
Mitchell will get one in front of the net as well. Fontaine jabs away at one as well, but just can't get pucks through to the goaltender, Gary Price. And when they do, he's very square to the play. Subban to Markov for a blast. Harding picks that aside. Niederreiter. Boy, who tips to the Montreal line. Brodziak knocks it down at center. Subban has to go back after it in his own zone. 38 points a year ago, tied with Chris Letang for the number one spot among all D men. Ryan Suter not far behind at 32. Niederreiter. Pump from behind by Markov. Puck pops up in the air. Niederreiter trying to work his way out front. Subban had him tied up. And the Canadians are two on two at the Minnesota line. Ball lost it at the wild blue line. Markov slides it across. Subban flips it into his own bench. Well, there's P.K. Subban, Norris Trophy winner. Came out of the gate very well this year. Scored 11 points in his first seven games this season, but has been held off the board for four straight games now. But you know you're not going to hold him off forever. He's got a bomb of a shot. Very, very nifty with the puck. Very aggressive. A lot of energy. It's all over the ice. Chance for Minnesota. Granlin shot. Deflects over the top of the goal. This year, Subban is tied for the NHL lead among defensemen with those 11 points. Hammondville shovels it in deep. Granlin jumps past it. Matt Cook has it. Cook to Pominville. Banks it off the end wall for Granlin. Granlin tried to go back in the slot. And it's deflected out to neutral ice. Granlin back to pick it up for Minnesota. Finds Pominville. Now Cook carries in. Cook has his shot deflected out of play. Wild of the Canadians. Even at one. Jason Pominville and Mikhail Granlin have developed some fast chemistry as Minnesota's top scoring pair. I think uh, he, he sees the ice really well. It, it kind of fits well where I like to shoot. He likes to pass. And um, I think we're not the biggest guys, but we try to stay in movement and, and, and create offense that way where we're constantly moving. And um, I mean, with all the skill he has, he also works extremely hard. And That's good to see. And they're also finding each other in places that you, you wouldn't seem to. Uh, some cross-ice passes that you think are errant, but they aren't. They, they seem to find each other. So that, that's the chemistry that you start to find when you play together for a little while. And, and good to see them still paired up. Mike Yo complimented both of them, saying they're both very smart players, but that they also see the game in a similar fashion. Keatley protects the puck in the corner and feeds the point. Ballard. Try to go back to Heatley. Instead, it winds up behind the net. And the Canadians are able to clear. Bork plays it across. Parisi tips it back in for Minnesota. Parisi on the puck in the corner. Throws a check, but Montreal controls. And DeHarnay comes to center. Dumps it into the Minnesota zone where Clayton Stoner goes back to pick it up. Heatley battles at neutral ice. Mitchell after it, but Eller got there first. And a long pass sends Gallagher in. And then Gallagher's taken down. Good job by Brodine. Basically cut Gallagher to a point where he didn't have a great angle anymore, and Harding was able to take the rest of the angle away. Gallagher bumped by Kanapka. Suter has Eller pinned up against the boards. Eller comes away with the puck and feeds the point, but nobody home for Montreal. Kanapka and Eller still tangled up behind the play at center. Puck comes back into the Minnesota zone. Brodine's long pass sends Koivu in. Koivu puts on the brakes. Waits for the change to complete. Still with the puck. High in the slot. Across. Scandella with a shot. That was knocked down by Price. And cleared to center. Spurgeon back to pick it up for Minnesota. Wild defensemen seem to be getting pucks through here. Fontaine tried to get it to Koivu, but it's tipped and broken up by Murray. 
Akinets is back the other way. Koivu has it for Minnesota. Akinets into the circle. A shot saved by Harding. Harding had to make a couple of good saves in the last minute or so as the Canadians developing chances in transition. And that's what a team that kind of sits back a little bit and plays good zone that can do. If you watch your transitions, you could be a little unfortunate if you uh, leave it too wide open because that's when they can jump and turn the play back the other way. Here's a good play by Brodine. Talk about good stick, good angle. And Josh Harding, he's challenging way out on the top of his crease. That's just a good defensive play by the goaltender and defenseman. Nonverbal communication there as that shot was easily start turned aside. A physical faceoff win for Ryan White. Canadians with a chance. Shuban to Markov. Markov with a long shot off the end glass. Stoner hustling after it. It looked like Markov was trying to use the boards to bounce it back out as he didn't have a lane. Pominville tips to the line. White holds. Now Pominville's in alone. Pominville scores! Another Gradlin Pominville combination with a speed right up. Two lines. And just a little wire shot on the lower part. Look at this beautiful feed through some traffic. And again, Pominville shooting with the knowledge that he's going to score. That's the confidence of a player that knows he's going to score. Pominville again making that second half of the combination work. Seven goals in his last nine games. Eight on the year. And Minnesota's back on top by one. Ninth assist for Mikhail Granlin this season. And he's had five of them in the last four games. Suter at center for Minnesota. Parisi plays it back into his own zone. Suter across to Brodine. Granlin, the only assist on the play. Canadians looking for an answer again. Remember, they scored 25 seconds after the first Minnesota goal. And here, DeHarnay has a good look from the slot area. The seconds after Holland will put Minnesota back on top by one. Oh, I'm wondering if uh, Granlin was banged up a little bit at the end of that play because he went down the tunnel. I'm not sure whether it was equipment or not. But uh, whatever it is, he shook it off and he's back on the bench. And Pominville again. What a play. And great vision. Granlin just seems to find Pominville in so many spots. With great vision. That one was a beautiful feed. Across the blue line, red line, and up to the offensive blue line. Keller sidesteps Koivu. Through the neutral zone into the Minnesota end. Belchenyuk with it. And it's stripped away by Scandella. Now he has it back. Continue come from Harding down, and the puck rolls just wide. Well, he won't get credited for a save, but that was a save. The goaltenders are taught to extend themselves outwards, and that makes a player have to take a longer path to try and beat him, and that's why that puck didn't go in the net. Bouillard starts out for Montreal. We pass the halfway point of the second period. Minnesota 2, Montreal 1. Wild 4, 1, and 2 on their home ice this year. Only loss was in their last home start. Beaten here by Chicago earlier this week. Mornival carries in, works around Ballard. Out to the point. Diaz fakes the shot back to Bornival. He's knocked down by Stoner. Puck is loose, however, and then rolled just wide by Flakinets. Ballard. Bornival tips to the line. Diaz, his shot goes wide. Karam's right out front. Granlin able to shove it into the corner for Minnesota. Diaz, watched by Cook. Stoner picks up the puck for Minnesota. Behind the end line to Matt Cook. Cook got it to the line, but not out. And Granlin is finally able to get the puck through and out to neutral ice. Georges slams it back in for Montreal. 
Oh, the loose puck picked up by DeHarnay. Out to the point for Markov, across to Subban. Subban fires wide. Markov holds his own for Montreal. DeHarnay, out to the point, Subban with a blast, but it's off the glass. Ballard has his man tied up. Bramlin controls the puck, can't clear. Subban to Markov, his shot, blocked by Pominville, but it broke his stick. Bramlin scoops it up and flips it in. The Wild will finally get the change. Well, they needed a change because of the broken stick and because of the fatigue factor. Uh, that uh, markov suban combination was really working the point well. Scandella tries to carry down low for Minnesota. Subban knocks him off the puck. Kanafka holds at the point for Minnesota, then turned it over. Markov out of the head. And it's forced out to center by Bork. DeHarne is in offside. And we get a whistle. Jason Pavanville continues his scoring spin. Put Wild lead 2-1. Welcome back to Wild Lead 2-1. We're on the bench with Wild forward Kyle Brodzak. Both teams so aggressive. Lots of teams speed out there. How do you take advantage and push it back on Montreal here? Well, I think it's just, uh, you know, we got to make make strong plays. When we get the puck on our tape, uh, we can't be turning pucks over and get pucks in behind their D. And hopefully we'll catch them cheating and, uh, you know, bury a chance like we did uh, a couple minutes ago. Guys, up to you. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of uh, glaring opportunities in this style of game and you got to take your chances when they come and that's why that common bill play off of a Gramlin pass was was so nice because there's not too many scenes that you can find like that Coil to Niederreiter saved by Price what an effort by Coil to fight through two Montreal defenders and create a scoring chance Niederreiter plays it back in Price Clears himself and Brodine across to Suter. Well, Niederreiter now finding himself up on that line. That line seen, well, at least briefly, but that line seen Heatley, Fontaine, and now Niederreiter up there. I was waiting to see whether that was just a long line change, but Niederreiter went off, so that's a combo that uh, we haven't seen in this game yet. Dornival takes a check in the corner. Mike Yo has preached the fact that it was one of the adjustments they wanted to make after last season was they wanted to be more flexible with their line combinations from game to game and within games. And we've certainly seen that already this year. Bourneval at center for Montreal plays it into the Minnesota zone. Stoner goes back to pick it up to Ballard. Ballard's pass to Koivu at center into the Montreal zone. Brodziak after it in the corner. It's Koivu, Brodziak, and Fontaine up front for Minnesota. Spurgeon threw it toward the net, looking for a tip. Fontaine couldn't get there fast enough. And the Canadians have it at center with Brian Giante into the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon around to the near side. With Harnay back in behind the goal. Bork to the point. A shot saved by Harding. Bork. Watch by Spurgeon. DeHarne. Shoved outside by Stoner. Plays to the point. And across to Georges. His shot tipped. Saved by Harding. And he snatches the rebound out of the air. 2-1 wild. Love the combination there. You got two guys who could really shoot the puck. Look at the battle here, though. Coyle fighting his way through a check and then looking over his shoulder very quickly. And finding Niederreiter. Niederreiter has a very heavy shot. A window concepts game reset. Amonville with another goal. His eighth of the year. Seventh in the last nine games. Randall and assisted on this one. And Minnesota has a one goal lead late in the second. Amonville. Takes a return pass from Scandella. Drops it back. Brandlin fires. Blocked by Price. Rebound loose for a moment. Koivu had a chance at it, but it was deflected away before he could pull the trigger, and Spurgeon back after it for Minnesota. His pass behind Pominville, picked up by DeHarnay. LeBlanc at center. The end of the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon takes a look, then battles with DeHarnay. LeBlanc. Try to play it down low. Koivu's tangled up behind the net. Scandella to Granlin. 
Randlin uses a stutter step to get free into the Montreal zone across to Pominville, and it just hopped over his stick. But that was there. I mean, you wouldn't think he'd find him. That was a cross rink pass with Granlin right on the left boards. Almost made contact again. Harding will be forced to hold this with trouble in the area. Fox Sports North is proud to partner with Johns, Hop Johns Hopkins Medicine, one of this year's Fox Supports Charities. Johns Hopkins is at the forefront of groundbreaking research in autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Join us in the fight against autoimmune diseases. Donate now by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. Rodin takes a hit. Puck winds up out front. Galchenyuk again. He draws a hook. There's a penalty coming against Minnesota. His backhander deflected over the top of the goal, but the Canadians will go on the power play. I'm thinking that might have been a good penalty to take. Galchenyuk was moving in very, very swiftly. Two minutes for home. Charlie Coyle tried to lift the stick, but actually got the stick up under the arms. Watch this. Suter steps up on him. Coyle comes back for the back check. Haven't seen a lot of penalties in this game. It's been a, a pretty clean game. This is the first power play that we've seen for the Canadiens. Well, Chenyuk, such an electric scorer. He's the highest scoring player out of the 2012 NHL draft. 37 points, including his assist earlier tonight. Three more than Nail Yakupov. In his NHL career, Yakupov was selected first that year. Volchenyuk was the third pick. Well, keep an eye on Subban because he will be teeing it up from the point. Here he is, and he fires right into the midsection of Josh Harding. And if that's the kind of lane you're going to get, then Josh Harding will likely see every single one of them. But you know that the Canadians are going to try and get some bodies in front. Good lane here. It's a quick one-timer. Now, the reason why this is still dangerous is because Subban can shoot the pill. <laughs> he can unleash it. That one-timer with the right-hand shot, switching over to the left side. Canadians, seventh in the NHL, 22.5% on the power play. Centering pass. Puck is loose, picked up by Matt Cook, who starts back for the wild. Cook flips it high in the air and down into the Canadian zone. Subban back to pick it up for Montreal. Markov's pass at center sends Eller into the Minnesota zone. Works around Brodeen. Hit by Suter and dumped in the corner. And Cook again has the puck for Minnesota. Two on two shorthanded with Brodziak. Stops outside of the Montreal blue line and dumps it in. Oh, the wild penalty kill isn't ranked very high in the National Hockey League on the whole season. Over the last six games, they've been in the 83% range, so it's gotten better. That's yeah. why goaltending. Harding makes the stop there. Gianta had a good look from high in the slot. Subban to the middle to Markov. Markov looking for a tip. It deflects to the far boards. Like an ets out on top. Subban with a drive save. Harding rebound. And Harding with a sensational glove save. Robbing Markov. Markov flirting down in the offensive zone. Looking for that rebound. The one-timer. And I don't know if he floated it straight up or Harding got a piece of it. But Markov knew that he'd missed a, a great opportunity off that toe save by Harding. Thirty-six seconds left in the Montreal power play. Wild leading by one late in the second. Bouillard. Centering pass. Bourneval tipped it back. And then Diaz's shot goes high and wide. Bouillard with it. Across to Diaz. Back to Bouillard. 20 in the power play. Lekanet says his shot deflect wide. Bourneval behind the net. Lakinets for the point. Booyah. Back pedals watched by Brodziak. Diaz. To Booyah. Lakinets. Five seconds left in the power play. His shot 
right on and held by Harding, in spite of the fact that Giotto was set up right in his lap. Well, Giotto's a very skilled guy, but certainly not a very big guy, and that's likely what allowed Harding to see you know, plenty of that shot. But the Canadiens really did a great job in using that power play to get some good scoring chances. Maybe as many as they've had all game long. Ballard has to cover up as Granlin whiffed on a clearing attempt. Granlin has it at center. Kanopka trying to join the play and make it a three on two. Granlin to the outside. Kanopka tangled up in the Montreal crease. The Wilder at full strength. Granlin looking for Pominville. That was intercepted on the way. Pominville to the point. Brodine back to Pominville. Pominville to Granlin in the circle. Granlin waits to Pominville for a one timer and Diaz blocked it. You almost knew that that was going back to Pominville. He tried to one time that one which would have been very difficult on Carey Price because a cross ice pass even though the goaltender only has the crease to go across, he has to have his angle. Watch his speed and go right back. If that gets off the way he wants it to, Carey Price would have been there, but he'd have been deep in his net. It's amazing how quickly those two create space in the offensive zone. Well, three passes, and all of a sudden there's an opportunity. So that's the, uh, the kind of space that they can create using their other uh, players as well. Boyle trying to keep the play alive on the wall. Clearing attempt gets by Suter. Brodine back after it for Minnesota. 95 seconds left in the period. Wild leading by one. Go ahead, goal scored by Pominville. Brodine ahead to Parisi. Way to the Montreal zone. Subban behind the net to Eller. Gallagher. Races around Rodina shot. Harding with a save. And the rebound was blocked. Subban bobbles the puck. Recovers to Markov. His shot off the post. Gallagher holds to Subban. Final minute of the period. Markov to Subban. Subban backpedals to Markov. Wanted the one-timer. The angle wasn't there. Instead flips it toward the net. And it's tipped wide by Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk got it for Montreal. Watched by Parisi. Leaves in the corner for Eller. Great pressure by the Canadians in the final minute. Eller spins to Subban. Back to Eller. Eller to Subban. A drive and a save by Harding. They needed a whistle there. Rodin underestimated Gallagher's speed around the perimeter. And then Markov finds a seam somewhere. May have actually caught part of the skate of Rodin. And then up through the equipment of Harding and off the crossbar. Canadians desperately trying to tie the score before the end of the second period. Montreal with a 13, excuse me, a 19 to 13 edge in shots on goal for the game. They have 13 shots to Minnesota's six here in the second period. Like an ounce. Knocked off the puck by Spurgeon. Fontaine fights through a check, reaches center ice to Koivu. Onside at the line as Koivu works his way outside. Koivu still with it behind the net. Back pedals to the circle. His shot was blocked. He was trying to get it to Brodziak out front of the net. Scandella hustles back, and this will be icing against Montreal with eight and a half seconds left in the period. Well, Koivu trying to create right there. And Communication is going to be key between these guys. When you go back to the bench, there needs to be conversation. You don't know who your flight mate's going to be, maybe, but there needs to be conversation after every shift until you get used to what your line mate's going to do. Boy, who Pominville Parisi up front for Minnesota on this draw late in the period. Boy, who against Play Cadets in the circle. who wins the draw. Parisi to the point. Spurgeon a long shot. That's just wide. Pominville was knocked down. 
Souter holds the zone. Parisi fires at the horn, and Price steers it aside. Minnesota leaves the second period with a one-goal lead. Well, Pominville complaining he was dumped in front of the net, but he did get the go-ahead goal in this period on a beautiful Grandland feed, and this is a tough game. It's a tough defensive game, and there's not a lot of space out there, and that's where the Wild's talent will have to create some more. Coming up in our second intermission, we'll check in with the guys from Fox Sports Live, and Kevin Gord will visit with Jason Pominville, 2-1 Wild after two. Canadians won after two here at the XL Energy Center. Now is a great time to become a Minnesota Wild season ticket holder. Choose from full season tickets, half season tickets, and 10 game plans. Enjoy great benefits, including discounted tickets and more. Call 651 222 Wild or visit wild.com for details. Mike, we saw Montreal start to take some chances even in the second period where Minnesota was able to counterattack and get opportunities at the other end. You expect to see more of the same here in the third. Well, you know, it's a, it's a classic situation where in order to open up the ice, you have to open up your game a little bit as well. And sometimes you leave yourself a little bit exposed in that situation. And it takes a good team to find those holes like Bramlin and Pavinville were able to do. Not a lot of them out there. The Wild only had six shots. Harding did a good job in the net. And I think the Wild did a fairly good job in front of them. Not a lot of glaring chances in the Wild end either. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the Montreal Canadiens aren't giving up a lot. In the last two games coming into tonight, they had allowed 54 shots against and blocked 57 others. Tonight, they've allowed 13 shots and blocked 12. So uh, they're getting in front of a lot of things, and their goaltender's getting into most of the rest of them. So there's not a lot of holes out there for either team. 20 minutes left. With the Wild on top by one. And we get some barking between Gianta and Koivu before the puck hits the ice. As the captains exchange pleasantries. Koivu wins the draw. Shooter with it for Minnesota. Parisi works his way free from Subban. Drops to Koivu a shot. Saved by Price. And a great chance for Minnesota. On the opening shift to the third period with Koivu Parisi and Coyle up front for the Wild. Ah, a little reunited music to be played right now. Again, Mike Yo doing a lot of shuffling. Gianta. Knocked away by Suter around to the far side. Charlie Coyle there for Minnesota. Coyle drops it back. Perhaps an indication of Mike Yo wanting to try and protect the lead with what had been one of his best checking lines over the last couple of weeks. When you have depth in your lineup, you can spread out the wealth or bring it all back together. Remember that Brodziak and Cook had done such a great job playing against other teams' top units here over the last couple of weeks. We'll wait to see if that's indeed the case. Eller with a shot. It got through to Harding, and he covers up the rebound. Well, Pominville... Niederreiter and Granlin together, so there's a little bit of a reforming of that line, and you may actually see what you mentioned, and that is the Brodziak Cook, who are coming over the boards with Fontaine, so uh, Mike Yo definitely shuffling things up, but you know, every combination he's come out with, there's, there's some good reasoning behind each one at the different times of the game, and right now he's putting some familiarity back out there because the comfort level will go up and therefore hopefully some production or at least some good defense. Rodziak knocks it ahead. He has Fontaine with him at center. Banks it off the wall into the corner. Murray is back for Montreal. And keep in mind, Mike Yo has not had to worry about a lot of power plays or penalty kills in this game to mess up his line. So these are all choices that he's making. He's not being forced to move his lines around. Just one power play chance for each team in this game. LeBlanc eyes up Brodziak at center ice. 
Brodziak back to Scandella. Works his way through neutral to Brodziak. His shot blocked by Murray. Canadians come back through neutral ice. Gallagher up the wing. Knocked away nicely by Scandella. Gallagher's tried that move a few times. Once around Brodine in the second. And this one he tried to get around Scandella. But Scandella went to school, I think, on some of those earlier plays and did not allow that little shift where you toss the puck around the defender and get around him. Subban in his own zone. Across to Markov. Long pass, trying to spring Eller. Stoner back to pick it up, but he put it right in the stick of Gallagher. His shot blocked by Coyle. Parisi to Koivu. Koivu carries to center and rings it around to the near side. Charlie Coyle there. Jams it into the corner for Parisi. Bornival picks it up for Montreal. Fights off a Koivu check and escapes the Canadian zone. And he escapes a call from the referee there. And you stop moving your feet and start reaching around, guys. You're going to get called. Mitchell plays it back to the corner for Stoner. Koivu tips ahead. Mitchell carries in. Mitchell into the corner. Tried to center. Rolled off of his stick and the Canadians able to clear. Kanapka knocks it down and plays it right back in. Heatley after it for Minnesota. Lost his stick. And the Canadians have it with Gianta. Bornival at center. Fires it in as Montreal will change. Harding to Suter behind the goal. Three and a half minutes into the third. Fontaine and Commonville have scored tonight for Minnesota. Sandwiched around a Gallagher goal for Montreal. And the Wild have a 2-1 advantage. Commonville trying to force this puck out of the Minnesota zone. Niederreiter will play it back. And Rodin safely banks it off the wall, but it escapes Suter on the near side. Yeah, caught a bit of a rolling puck there off the back of the net. Suter broke his stick and heads for the bench. Centering pass for Niederreiter. Scores! I think maybe Niederreiter is catching some of Andrew Burnett's coaching by osmosis. He hasn't scored a goal further than about three feet out this year. Everything's from in tight, and watch how he just chips this one up over Carey Price. What a beautiful little play. Wow, is that a tight angle? Must have used a lob wedge on that one because he went right up underneath the bar from about six inches away from the goal pad. That's not easy to do to get that kind of loft on a puck from that tight in. Graziak back for Minnesota. Fontaine gets it by Subban. Graziak after it in the corner. To Cook in the corner. Cook centers a tip by Fontaine and a save by Price. Good pressure for Minnesota. Cook tried to center. That deflects off the skate. Subban picks it up. Markov. Out through neutral ice. LeBlanc gloves and drops at the Minnesota line. Scandella plays it back out to center. Bork is there for Montreal. Bork knocked off the puck by Parisi. And that creates an offside whistle. Check out a photo gallery from tonight's game at FoxSportsNorth.com. Read the reaction from the locker room in Brian Hall's game story. You can find that now at FoxSportsNorth.com. Uh, Granlund continues a pretty good pace. Leads the Wild, and would you have said that coming through training camp? Gallagher fires on goal. Harding smothers the rebound. I asked Mike Yo about that. Granlund clearly came into camp having to earn his way onto the team. Not only has he earned his way on the team, but he has quickly become as impressive offensively as any forward for the Wild. Well, you know, when you talk to coaches and they say, yeah, this guy looks faster and this guy looks stronger, and then, you know, they, you hear a lot of that and you, you certainly believe it, but the player still has to do something to make that evident out on the ice. And if some guys do and some guys don't, Granlin has. He's really connected well. He looks more confident. He looks more assertive with the puck. 
And he has uh, done a great job game after game of connecting with Pominville. And Yo just said simply, he went and worked on everything we gave him at the end of last season. The other guy that did that, Charlie Coyle. Great to see youth coming in. Now that actually listened to a direction in the summertime. Brodine turns it over. Dolchenyuk to Eller, a shot that goes wide. Bouillard retreats in his own zone for Montreal. Watched closely by Parisi. Bouillard flips it in. Giante flipped it in behind the goal. Lekanets is there to Gianta. Lekanets behind the net. Drops it out to the point. Long shot. Deflected wide. Ballard after it. Now a centering pass. Niederreiter emerges for Minnesota. Niederreiter knocked off the puck by Bouillard. Gianta carries back to center for Montreal. And into the Minnesota zone. Harding sweeps it around for Spurgeon on the far side. Bourneval is there for Montreal. Granlund banks it back. And Scandella to Niederreiter through neutral ice. Six and a half into the third. Wild on top, 3-1. Heatley battling in the corner. Heatley takes a bump, and we're going to get a penalty. Danny Heatley is going to draw a penalty and put Minnesota on the power play. Our Toyota get caught up. Justin Fontaine scored first for Minnesota. His fourth goal of the season. 25 seconds later, Brendan Gallagher tied it for Montreal, and then it was the Granlin and Commonville connection once more. Great to see these guys continue to connect. It's not just an accident. They know where everyone is on the ice, including each other, and even can find other players like Niederreiter, who chips one upstairs and gives the Wild a little bit of breathing room here in this third period. Danny Heatley called for holding the stick. So Minnesota is shorthanded down, leading by two goals here. Harding down. Puck pops loose. Markov with it. To Subban for a drive, and he scores. Well, there's the power of P.K. Subban. And I said it was only a matter of time. He came into this game being held off the board for four straight games. And you give him a chance to tee it up through the screen like that, he's going to score. And P.K. Subban with the one-timer while we're unable to get it out of the zone. He had a number of those on their first power play, but in each case, Harding had a clear look at it. This time, there was commotion in front of him. And I'm not so sure, by the way, that there was reaction in front. For Montreal, the power play is to the season number 76. Oh, they are going to give it to him. It looked like uh, Galchenyuk reacted as if he may have got a piece of it. But there, right now, it is Subban's goal. And another chance. Gianta fires just wide. And the puck comes all the way back out. Now let's see how Minnesota reacts. To Montreal trimming the lead back to one. The Heatley penalty proves costly for Minnesota as Montreal scores on the power play. Yeah, we thought that it originally had drawn the penalty, but instead it reached around and grabbed the stick of one of the Canadiens players. Koivu for Minnesota. To Coyle. Brodine starts out for Minnesota to Parisi, who plays it across. Ramlin hustling after it. Diaz for Montreal. Play to the line. Pominville holds and Scandella with a drive. Steered aside by Price. Bourneval. Across to Georges who plays it out to center. Ramlin back in for Minnesota. Need a rider to Scandella with a shot right on. And a glove save by Price. Bud Light once on tap. Minnesota in the midst of a stretch where they'll play six out of seven at home. There are two remaining. New Jersey Sunday, Calgary Tuesday, 
And then a brief swing to the East Coast for two, Washington and Carolina. A lot of Eastern Conference opponents early on in the year here. Mike Gill, of course, and his Minnesota Wild did not face any last year, but he said that's one area we need to get better at against these teams. Going to face each one of them twice in the East. Booyah, back of the net for Montreal. Watched by Brodziak. And starts out for the Canadians. Pass was tipped at center by Spurgeon. And played all the way down by Galchenyuk, and it'll be icing against Montreal. Our Sanford Health injury report. Upper body injury, and uh, I guess you don't wish ill will on anybody, but it would be nice if he was still out of the lineup when the, the Wild uh, go to Washington next week. But look at the uh, results. I'm sure they feel that if they can put up those kind of numbers, maybe he can take all the time that he needs. Philadelphia in turmoil, to say the least. Can you imagine a more disappointing start to the season? They're now three and nine. Parisi tips it in for Minnesota. Gallagher at center. Takes a hit from Suter as he plays it in. Brodine back to pick it up for Minnesota. Parisi to Koivu. And now Coyle into the zone, has it knocked off of his stick. And Marchenyuk for Montreal. And right there is where the Wild are going to have to be very careful is that offensive blue line. You talk about transition hockey, and that's where teams that transition on you generally started from. LeBlanc fires on goal. Harding got a stick on it. Suter trying to protect. Harding hugging the right post. They continue to jam away, and finally a whistle. I'm surprised they did not blow the whistle sooner. They must have saw it loose, because Suter really had to go to battle there. And throw one of the Canadiens players in a headlock. Right there at the side of the net. Rene Bork, who is a battler. Remember him with Calgary, and that's the kind of player he is, and that's what you want out of a player the puck you see it jammed up there but he's going to keep going until the referee blows the whistle <laughs> Ryan Suter getting physical I like that Suter uh, mild mannered but when he needs to bring out the nasty he, he can do it long shot by Subban tipped wide by Borny Wall Subban spins away from Fontaine. The end of the corner, Gianta. Back to Subban. Markov setting up for the one-timer, and they score. It was tipped out front by DeHarnay. And the Canadians have tied this game. Now Subban again makes this happen because he draws so much attention towards himself with the puck that when he does speed it across, if it's a quick play to the front of the net, you're going to see some scoring. And here's a blast and a deflection by Gianta. And what a nice play there by Gianta deflecting that one in. He's small, but he's quick. He's aggressive, has great hands. And when he gets in there, you don't always see him sneak into the back door area. And Markov gets it to the top of the crease. The Wild call a timeout as they've allowed this game to become tied now for the second time. Two-goal lead in this third period on a goal by Niederreiter that accented the 2-1 lead that they brought into the period. And the Danny Heatley holding penalty and then this goal have tied this game up. Well, you wondered how Minnesota would handle the potential momentum swing toward the Canadiens, and they didn't handle it well. Montreal really 
built off of that power play goal. And they treated that play like a power play. Moving the puck around very nice and getting from point to point to the front of the net. Wild Canadians now even heading down the stretch. Wild three, Canadians three. Last half of the third period here in St. Paul. It's been a back and forth game. The Wild have never trailed. But they've let leads of 1-0 and 3-1 get away. Gianta, who just tied it for Montreal moments ago. Commonville to center for Minnesota. Gramlin tangled up there. They connects into the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon back pedals for the Wild. Commonville tips it into Montreal territory. Now Granlin will fire it in. Niederreiter up the left wing. Lost it to Diaz in the corner. And the Canadians able to clear. Brodeen banks it off the boards. Niederreiter's dump hit the linesman. And Montreal's back the other way. Coyle. And now Brodeen. Suter has it behind the net. Koivu at center. Onside with Coyle. Coyle back to Koivu, but it was out of his reach. A oh, good idea. Never want to turn off a shot, but he had Miko Koivu reaching for that one. Out front, Gallagher. Koivu banks it to the corner. Montreal's had more offensive zone time than Minnesota for certain here in the third period. Koivu carries to center, three on two. Has Stoner and Coyle with him. Stoner to the circle of shot. And Price steers it aside. The rebound was right there for Parisi. Got stuck in his gear and dropped right down in the crease. Coyle plays it in. Minnesota wants to change, and Coyle's down. Uh, he got hit right in the number and got kind of a whiplash scenario when he was uh, hit. DeHarnay lost it inside the Minnesota line. Brodziak a shot and a save by Price. Face off coming in the Montreal zone. And let's watch the hit on Charlie Coyle once more. Well, he got hit from behind and then maybe even hit in the chin from the front as well. So it was a whiplash and then, yeah, got his face into the hip of one of the Canadians. So that can be something that will definitely shake you up. Last thing the Wild need is to have him go back out with injury but Ronnie Fuller taking a look at him there and he seems to be all right look at neutral ice Brodziak around to the far side Fontaine there for Minnesota Brodziak and Diaz tangle behind the goal Scandella lost it to Georges in the corner Georges spins away from trouble plays it out to neutral ice and here's another chance LeBlanc centers they wanted a penalty call because they maybe had a decent case for one. There was contact in the slot. Spurgeon starts back for Minnesota. Spurgeon with it again. He Scandella. Mitchell brings it in onside. Heatley with it. Kanopka was breaking for the net. Heatley plays it behind the goal. Kanopka. Watched by Gianta. Mitchell with it. Wheatley setting up out front. Suter works his way down the wall. Centers! And it was tipped out front by Kanopka. Barry Price with a save on the redirect. Now Mike Gill has that top beat bearing out there with that fourth line. Brodine and Suter. Watch Suter work it down the left wall and center it right to the middle of the ice. Barry Price grabbed it right away. Kanopka was desperately looking for something to fall out of the equipment so he could jam it away. Good shift there by that line. Anytime the fourth line can have the offensive zone in, the better off they are. Face it off again in the Montreal zone. Just under six and a half minutes left. Have a couple of 
couple seconds maybe added to the clock. Koivu to draw against Ryan White in the offensive zone for Minnesota. White wins the faceoff for Montreal. Gallagher hustling after it. Brodine pinches him off the puck and we get a whistle as the puck is played with a high stick. All the way back down on the other end. These are important draws. The Wild so far in this game on the short end of the stick in terms of faceoffs, 48% to 52 for Montreal. But here's where the key draws are coming into play. Suter works his way into the corner. Plays in behind the goal. Coyle's centering pass was broken up. Koivu has it. Koivu looking for a lane. Can't find one. White sends Coyle reeling into the wall. And Coyle limps toward the bench. That's the second time he's been taken advantage of. Harding's down. Belchenyuk fires over the top of the goal. Canadians suddenly very physical here. Parisi into the Montreal zone. Commonville. Try to go back to Parisi, just out of his reach. Almondville has it in the corner. Parisi breaks for the net. Ballard to Stoner. Stoner fires its block. Bouncing puck picked up by Koivu. To Ballard at the point. Ballard's long shot. Block Commonville! tell you, Ballard has done a very good job in this game. Both of his assists have come off of Eric's deflections, where he all he did was get the puck to the net. Watch this. It just goes off a body. It hits Parisi as he knocks it down. Now Ballard is just doing the right thing, getting it to the net. And both times off the Fontaine goal and now off Pominville's redirect at the side of the net. He's gotten assists by doing a very simple thing and just taking a wrist shot at the net. It's very important to do the simple things in games like this. And Pominville finishes nicely. And the Wild get yet another chance to hold on to a lead. Now with just over five minutes left. 4-3 Minnesota. And back to pick it up for Minnesota. Scandella jamming in the corner. Out to the point, now across to Diaz. Long shot wide. Rodziak has it behind the net for Minnesota. Spurgeon starts out for the Wild. A turnover at the blue line. Fontaine wanted a whistle but doesn't get one. Yeah, that went off the linesman and uh, it didn't come in on an offside, so they let it keep going. Wild offense held to two goals or less in eight of their first ten games. They've now scored at least three in three out of the last four. Brodine able to hold the zone. Niederreiter plays to the corner too far for Pominville. Granlund is there. Whips it to Niederreiter for a shot that goes just wide. Talking with Wild assistant general manager Brent Flair during the intermission about Mikhail Granlund's play. And he said it all comes down to vision. And you can see it right there how quickly he sees open players and open space. He's got the ability to thread the needle as well. With quick little feeds, tape to tape. It's fun to watch him this year. His development has been great. Harding with a stop. Diaz holds the zone. Archenia plays it around behind the goal. Out to the point for Diaz. Diaz with a long shot. It deflects wide. Gallagher trying to knock it off the back of the net. He does. Booyah from the far wall. His pass knocked down by Koivu. Could be a three on two for Minnesota. Parisi into the zone. Back to Koivu. Fontaine was tied up and taken down. Eller back from Montreal. 
Ballard picks his pocket. Good puck protection there by Ballard. Instead of panicking, he didn't fire it down the ice. He protected it, but then didn't get the benefit of it out there as he banked it off the boards and it didn't touch anybody. Yeah, but did a good job of protecting the puck in front of the ice. A lot of chatter at the wild bench right now. P.K. Subban having a conversation with uh, some wild players and the referee. Just under three minutes left. Two goals for Jason Bonneville in the wild. Have a 4-3 lead. Subban with a long shot. Knocked down by Harding. And he just does cover the rebound with Gianta nearby. The Wild hanging on at home, leading 4-3. Welcome back. I'm Jamie Hirsch inviting you to stay with us after the game for Wild Live presented by Century Link. It's been an exciting one here tonight. And Mikhail Granlin and Jason Pominville continue their hot streak. We'll take a closer look at that. Also talk about that big blue line assist from Keith Ballard and here from Mike Yo after the game. Plus, stick with us for our DQ instructional on the ice the game in our post-game show. We'll be talking about the importance of the glide. Anthony and Mike. I always look forward to seeing Mike Greenlay on the ice. I don't know if that's me out there. <laughs> Last time you were out there, but you didn't do anything. Well, because I haven't perfected the glide or the slide stop turn or anything else. So I have to get professionals to show us how. The Wild can't glide the rest of the way in this one. Subban lost it to Charlie Coyle at center. Cook plays it deep for Minnesota. Subban around behind a Markov on the far side. Long pass, bounces ahead. Born ball at the Minnesota line. Try to go across to flick the nets. Suter behind the goal for Minnesota. Cook with it. Taps to Mitchell. Corey Mitchell back to Cook. Cook has support in the zone. His pass. Handcuffed Brodziak a bit. Mitchell then hit escape. And Gianta got it back to the line. Mitchell fell down. Gianta flips it out of play. Right, let's take a look at our Timberland Pro hard hit highlights. Well, it's been more physical here in the third, although there have been some hits in the game early on. Uh, Coyle gets in there on George's and uh, does a good job. Zuban, always physical. Niederreiter. Dumping guys into benches, <laughs> so it's been good to see guys throwing their weight around. Harding steers this one to the near side, and the Wild clear once more. Another scoring chance for Pominville. Granlin fires, and a save by Price. Well, it's good to see some give and take. As and Granlin gets the one-timer. Still looking for his first goal of the year, although he's certainly getting the helpers up there. Ten helpers on the year. Leads the Wild. Diaz. Hanks it ahead. And then it's played down into the Minnesota zone. Scandella back. Spurgeon, 70 seconds to go. Price had to play this, so icing waved off. And Minnesota catches a break there. A minute to go. Subban races out of his own zone. Price heads for the bench. Gallagher up the wall. A shot. Harding pokes the rebound into the corner. Aller tied up behind the net by Koivu. On the near side. Out to the point for Subban. A shot. It was tipped on the way. Gallagher rolls one just wide. Mitchell golfs it off the glass and down. Dangerous play by Mitchell because he almost fired this puck out of play. Well, that created a six-on-four situation, but it remains as it was. Not always a bad play. Even though you don't get a line change, you still get a bit of a breather, and the Wild uh, needed that. The last shot, pinballs around in front, off skates and sticks, and finally swept just wide of the net. over half a minute left. Face off in the Minnesota zone. Eller against Koivu. Minnesota controls. Parisi hustles over. 
Can't get it out of the zone. Mitchell sweeping at it, and it's cleared. It will not be icing, and the Canadians have to hustle back. Subban watched by Corby. Turns it over. Parisi fires at the empty net. Tobinville racks it back to the corner. 12 seconds left. Eller ahead on the right side. Lake Connect sends it wide. Corbu's there for Minnesota. And the Wild win. A lot of character exposed here. The Wild came up. Their lead. Montreal tied the game, but boy, the Wild did not let that deflate them. Uh, they stuck with it and really got a great performance out of a lot of guys, including our temp star, star of the game, Jason Pollenbill, who continues the torrid pace along with Granlin and did a great job of being Johnny on the spot at the side of the net for the game winner. What an excellent game. He and Granlin, but Pommonville are clearly showing some veteran leadership out there. And Jamie, the new look line combinations turned out to be very fluid throughout the night, but it adds up to a 4 3 Minnesota win. And no line better than the one with Jason Pommonville on it. We'll take a look at the hot streak that continues between he and Mikhail Granlin. We'll also talk about Keith Ballard's blue line assist that turned out to be a big one tonight.